Welcome to the Land of House YouTube channel. I'm Seth. In this video, I install an additional three kilowatts of solar behind my house. If you're interested in that, then continue watching. I'm filming this video in mid-December and the sun is about as low in the sky as it normally gets. So I'm just kind of considering here, if I point my handle up at the sun, uh, it's kind of cloudy so I can't really see the shadow, but it's gonna be somewhere right around in here. So I want to step back about this far and then uh, dig my first hole here. And I'm gonna actually move over a little bit to avoid this big stump back here. As you can see behind me, I have my other three kilowatt solar rack and I've got nine different four by fours sunk into the ground and that has worked just fine. But I think on this new setup, I'm only gonna do six in the ground. And I think that is gonna be more than sufficient to uh, keep this uh, from blowing away in the wind, especially where I am here. Now, if your location has a lot more wind, then you may wanna consider adding those extra supports in there. Now, because I already have my first three kilowatts set up here, I know the position that they need to be in to face the sun. But if you're doing this for an original first install, then you're gonna to want to either use an app to find the exact position that the panels need to be in, or you can uh, wait till about 12 o'clock and use a soda can on a piece of cardboard. Just tape the bottom to it and you angle that into the sun and wherever there is no shadow is where you want to face your solar panels. So for me, I already know and I don't have to do that extra research. What I'm gonna do is simply use a tape measure and I'm going to figure out how far away I have come from the other set of um, panels and dig my holes based on that value. My initial hole is five and a half feet from center. And that's what I'm gonna do here on my next one. There we go, that right there is five and a half feet. I'm gonna put my next post right there. And I'll also do that with the third set down here at the end. I have an eight foot four by four. I'm gonna plop down into this hole here. Now obviously that is way too tall. So what I wanna do is find a place that I'm comfortable with and cut this off. So. Uh, the sun came out briefly and the shadow hits right in here in the grass. So my panel is going to be about that high. So it should be uh, above that shadow. So, and of course, as the summer progresses, it'll uh, get higher and higher as the sun goes higher and higher. So, all right. So what I want to do is pick a spot about right here and I'm going to uh, cut that off and I can use this other piece for one of the next holes down the line. So let's go ahead and just call this our level point. Main thing is I need to be able to uh, attach a uh, two by six under here. So let's go up to about right there. I'll transfer that mark across here. Go ahead and cut this four by four at that point. Just like with the first post, I'm gonna set the next one down here and get that placed in. Now, something a little bit different needs to happen here. I'm gonna use a two by four to go between these two posts and use a level to find out what's level on here. And hopefully this last piece of this one can be used down here at the last hole. So first of all, I'm gonna grab the drill and we will put a screw in here. That's simply just a reference point. Just gonna place the level here on this post, okay, right there. I'm gonna use a level and make sure that I can get this thing straight up and down here. And all three of those four by fours are now sunk in the ground. The next step is to take two 10 foot two by sixes and mount them on this side. Now I don't have those and also it's getting dark. So uh, tomorrow we will start doing that portion of this project. I'm gonna be using two by sixes as my cross pieces. You probably could get by with two by fours, but I kind of like the extra material to be able to attach to. So I'm gonna almost center this board on my four by four and then get this uh, just put into place with a screw. 
I'm gonna find level real quick before I put in my actual big anchor bolts. Okay, looks like about right there. I have some of these nice big anchor bolts. They use a T40 bit. I'm gonna put a couple of them in here to really hold things together nicely. Now here on the other end, I'm gonna pick up my two by six and get that kind of butted up against the other one here. Doesn't have to be 100% level, but just close enough. Now that I have the first course of my support done, I'm gonna be using Unistrut to mount these panels. And so I want to push that down about six inches or so, and then raise this to about the level that I need. And then I'm gonna step back, oh, about two feet or so. So I think the next support will be just fine right here. So the first post of the second supports will go right here. And then for the other two posts, I will measure back from that original support up there. So same as before, I'm gonna dig down about two feet to make sure this is strong enough that it won't have any issues with wind blowing these panels around. I'm gonna drop this post down here, something like that. And then I'm gonna take my piece of unit strut again and see how I'm doing on my angle. Now this is where you would take your uh, measuring tools with the sun and make sure that you have everything uh, at the correct angle. I'm just judging mine off of the previous panels which were set for wintertime sun. So anything in this direction with uh, a similar um, angle will be fine with me because uh, I know it's facing south. So um, the angle for me, it will just be based upon whether or not it's uh, summer, spring, fall, or winter. So anyway, all that to be said, I think I'm gonna leave this one at full height right here. Because whenever I put that two by six up here, it'll be a little bit higher and we'll be uh, matching that really well. Looks like we have got six feet between posts. I'm gonna step back here to the middle post and find where I need to dig for this one. I loosely set my board in the ground here. I'm just going to use my level once again to find out where this is level at. So a lot of these steps are just repetitive from the original uh, posts that I put in the ground. Uh, so I'm actually going to finish this here and then uh, do the rest without you, just to get that last post installed. Looks like about right there. So I'm gonna pull this one out, cut off that foot or so, and uh, move on to the next one. Now that I have all the posts sunk in the ground and all of the cross pieces hung up here on the wooden portion of the mount, it's time to get the Unistrut metal supports installed. So you can buy a U-bracket that will fit between the uh, two by six and go into all the holes on the Unistrut, but those are really expensive. So I have found that I can buy uh, all thread, inch and a quarter, six foot pieces for less than $5 a piece. So way cheaper. And I can also cut some aluminum bar and drill some holes in and basically make my own little U-brackets. So it depends on how much work you wanna put into it, but that's what I'm gonna do here. So first I need to measure from uh, the bottom of the two by six up into the Unistrut to see how long those all thread uh, pieces need to be. So let's do that real quick. All right, if I line up the Unistrut here on my two by six where I want it to go, I can measure where I want my all thread. I think seven inch on this side. And if I move over here, eight inch on that side should do it. So let's cut a bunch of those seven inch and eight inch all thread pieces. I have my quarter inch all thread and I need 32 total pieces, 16 that are seven inches and 16 that are eight inches long. So I'm gonna go down the line here and mark, uh, let's see, here's one at seven and then go down here and mark one at eight. I'm gonna go down the line until I have uh, 16 of each size there. And then I'm gonna cut these with an angle grinder and use a flap disc to smooth off the ends. 
I have found the angle grinder to be effective at cutting out these pieces of all thread. So I'm just going to go down here with a uh, metal cutoff wheel and cut these down to the 7 and 8 inch pieces. Whenever you use an angle grinder to cut off all thread, it leaves barbs here on the end of the all thread. So I've got a flap disc, which is just a bunch of sandpaper on my angle grinder. And I'm going to take off those barbs. Now the lower portion of this bracket needs to have a quarter inch hole on two different sides of the two by six. And so I'm just going to use this uh, two by four to represent that. And now I can uh, just kind of judge how far this needs to be. Uh, so if I cut this about right here, I will have sufficient room to put those two holes in there. And so I need to have a total of 16 of these pieces cut out. All right, so I'm going to use this and just go down the line here. Now before I cut all these out, let's go inside and use the drill press to put the holes in each one of these. I've put this piece of aluminum here on my drill press and I'm just going to put a hole at each section that needs to have the all thread going through. A hole back over here. Once I've cut that hole, just going to move on to the next spot. And now I'm just going to go down the line until I have holes in all of these pieces of aluminum. And now the last step to create these brackets is to use the cutoff disc to cut each one of these little sections out here. I've cut these before, and I find that if you just score them pretty heavy, then you can kind of bend them back and forth, and they will pop free. So I don't have to cut them 100% all the way through. Down here at the bottom, my solar panel is going to go into the second from last hole. So. Uh, this one right here is where the panel is going to be mounted. So if I move this down to about right here and put my piece in there, I should be good to go. So let's step up here to the top and see where this one needs to be. So somewhere right around here is where that's going to be attached to. All right, first thing, I'm going to slide one of these bigger washers up here. Eight inch all thread. Start one of these nuts on here. Place one of these pieces of flat aluminum on there. Go ahead and get a nut on the bottom of that. Now I can push another large washer up here. Get an all thread started in that. Get a nut on there. Push that down. And then that's going to lastly attach into the bottom of this aluminum plate. It's kind of a tight fit. You have to push that uh, back bar in a little bit to get it to work. Just got a wrench and then I've got a drill with a uh, socket set on there. My next piece of Unistrut needs to be 39 inches on center from the previous one. And that's because the mounting holes on my solar panels are at 39 inch. So let's go ahead and keep that in mind as I am installing the next inline here. 
When I first started looking into installing some solar panels behind my house, I had four 250 watt panels and I just made a very simple mount kind of based off of another mount that I saw on YouTube and uh, made my modifications with the bracket and it seems to have worked out really well. I have now increased that to three kilowatts and I have uh, decided now to add the additional three kilowatts. Now in the future, I'm probably going to add more panels to this back setup that I can have uh, maybe up to five or even six kilowatts feeding my batteries inside the house. Now I have worked with Langston's Alternative Power for several years now and he has been uh, abundantly helpful in both knowledge and supplying equipment. So the solar panels that I'm about to install here on this rack are actually from Langston's Alternative Power. They're used panels and so I was able to get them at a discounted price. And so if you are also looking to get some discounted panels, then I will have a link to his website in the description down below. Um, he is very responsive to phone calls. So if you have a solar question or a micro hydro question, then give him a shout and he will be more than happy to help you with your install. If you uh, want to learn more about my micro hydro, I have several videos on that here on the channel. And those are all sponsored by Langston's Alternative Power. And my solar stuff here has uh, basically been installed with help from his uh, great information. All right, I'm uh, just gonna continue to work down the line doing what we've already done, where I take the Unistrut and those all thread pieces and just get these put onto my solar mount here. Now I need to go buy some more of these Unistrut in town, but uh, we can at least go ahead and get these uh, six panels up first. So that's what we're gonna hopefully tackle today. These solar panels have mounting holes on four different spots, and I find they line up really well with the Unistrut. So, I had actually painted this one gray and one more thinking I was gonna match my previous set and discovered that was just too much work. So I have two that are gray and they're gonna go down here on the lower portion. I won't be able to see them from the house and the others will be all uh, the original black color. So I've just got some two inch screws and a large washer and a nut. I'm gonna go ahead and flip this panel up onto my rack and I'm gonna have the uh, MC4 wires facing in that direction so I can have my eventual wire going down to the house that way. So, all right, let's go ahead and begin installing this first panel. I've installed enough of these panels to know it can be a bit of a challenge to hold them in the right spot on this racking system and uh, get the bolts in here. But I'm gonna start with this lower one first and uh, hopefully I'll be able to reach around here and get this installed. Um, I can probably get some clamps to make this process a little easier. I think I'm gonna do that because otherwise it's gonna be a hassle. All right, I'm just gonna clamp these down here and hopefully that will keep the panel in place. Doesn't have to hold too much weight, just long enough for me to get this up here. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and get this third panel installed. I'm filming all of this right before Christmas, so my light goes away really fast here. So I'm almost done building for the day, but yeah, go ahead and get this one in. And I may work a moment without you just to finish up here. I'm gonna try to get one more row installed. Um, so after I get this panel up here, I then use my uh, washer, my nut and bolt to get this installed. Let me bring you around here so you can see that. I was looking at my bolt here. That may be an inch and three quarters instead of two inch, but anyway, it's close enough. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and pull this up here, get that bolt in. I'm actually gonna go up to the top one here to leave a little space so that these panels aren't resting on each other. Put my washer right there. Get this one here. Now I'm just going to hand tighten it and then move to the next one over here. Get this one on here because I don't want to tighten things down too much and then uh, not have it aligned properly. So go ahead and get that right there. Now my bottom row was a little bit off. I don't think it's going to be an issue though. All right, and so once I get those two into position, move on to the next ones before I 
cinch this down all the way, but I can at least get that a little bit closer to tight. There we go, not quite all the way, so I can still move that around as need be. I figure I have about 15 minutes of sun left, so my next task is to get the other two sections of Unistrut up here. And uh, I have to figure out the placement of them. So if I take my tape measure here and measure out from the Unistrut to edge of the panel, I've got a foot and a half inch. So I basically need to come over here and go about 13 inch, and that gives me enough room between uh, the two panels to uh, get this mounted. So make a mark there, and that's gonna be where I put my next piece of Unistrut. So, uh, and you've already seen me do those tasks, so I'm going to work on that without you for a bit, and I will bring you back if I have any issues or uh, whenever this uh, system is complete. I just finished getting all 12 of the panels here on my mount system. Let me show you what it looks like. Now you'll notice that the bottom two over here are gray. They're a different brand and a different size, and that kind of threw off my rack system here, but the four panels above that are nice and uniform, but then whenever I moved over to the next uh, six panels, it got off a little bit, as you can see, but it's all facing in the correct direction, and it's going to be just fine. So let me go ahead and show you the back here so you can see how that looks. Treated material for all the wood. Use the eight inch and seven inch all thread with these aluminum brackets. Had nuts and bolts on there. Used washers, nuts and bolts to attach the panels to the Unistrut. And it is all on there nice and tight. So the next step is to connect the positives and negatives of each of these panels because I'm gonna be using four panels in series and then the set of three in parallel. So in order to do that, I go to the first panel here, which uh, let's see, it's gonna be a little hard to find. Right here is the positive cable. So positive is going to connect to the negative of the next panel just like this right here. The positive of the first panel connects to the negative of the next panel, just like that, snaps right in. And now you take the positive of the second panel and you run it down here to the negative of the next panel, just like that. All right, we've got one more set of those to do down here. Positive of previous panel goes into the negative of the next panel. There we go. And so now what we have is basically three sets of positives and negatives. So here is a positive that needs to go all the way back up to the front. In order to get the three negatives together, I have this little adapter here that will allow the negative wires to fit together. There's one. There's two. And there's three. So now I have all of the negatives of all 12 panels connected into this one cable right here. I'm gonna do the same with the positives. The cable for the positives is just the opposite of the negatives. It has to have the female side right here, and this will just clip in all of these panels, positive ends down here. And now I can run a single positive back up to the front. I've got 70 feet of black and red 10 gauge solar wire. Go ahead and get this connected here. There we go. And that's gonna bring the power to the front of the panels where it will join with the black one and uh, go to the house. All right, plugging up the three different panels to the black wire here. There we go. I now have one black and one red wire right here to work with. This has to make it down to the house and go inside to my battery system. I ran the red and black wires to the bottom of the hill next to the house. Let's go ahead and turn on my multimeter. This is the VinLab multimeter. Let's turn it to uh, volts. Make sure I've got this on DC. And then I can take my red probe here into this side 
black probe over here and make sure the panels are working. 140 volts. So yes, this is working quite well. I just stretched my solar wire from the panels up here down the hill and to where they're going to go into my house. It's about the same place where this green grounding wire is. And so what I'm going to do is first step back up to the panels and disconnect my red or positive wire. And then I'm going to come back down here and uh, take off these MC4 connectors. And that will allow me to then use some half inch conduit, which I have right over here. And I will put that wire through the conduit, bury it all the way down here to the house. And then just like this other box right here, we will drill through the concrete and at attach the wire into the house. So that's the plan for right now. I have disconnected the red wire from the system. That's important, otherwise you may get shocked especially on a day like today where it's sunny out. I don't need these MC4 connectors on here and they're actually just going to get in the way from pushing my wire into the conduit. And so I'm gonna go ahead and remove these here. Sometimes you have to pull them pretty good. Let's see how well these come off. Ah, not too bad, all right. Okay, so first I have a short piece of conduit it's half inch, and this is where the wire is going to stick up out of at the top. So I'm gonna first run this wire through here. Now after that, I'm gonna run a little uh, coupling. And then in order to make the um, cut down towards the house here, I'm gonna add this uh, sweeping 90, and that will bring us down towards the house. So I'm going to run these three bits all the way up to the solar panels and then we will move on to the next piece which will be uh, just a 10 foot section with the bell on one end. So uh, this takes quite a bit of time but I'm just going to start walking this piece back up to the solar panels. Now that I have all of the wire in conduit down to the house, I'm gonna start putting some glue on here. Now you're technically supposed to glue these bits and then run the uh, wire through it, but I don't have any kind of wire puller. And so I'm just gonna do it this way where I just put some cement here on the outside and just uh, make do with what I have. It's gonna be fine. This wire is direct burial anyhow. And so any kind of protection I have over it is just uh, for shovels and that kind of thing. So anyway, let's go ahead and get all these joints down to the bottom. Made a good connection here. Here's where the real fun begins. I have to bury this conduit in the North Carolina soil where it is a rock in every 15 inches, so let's go ahead and begin this burial. And that's all the time I'm gonna to dedicate to digging a trench today. Uh, it's maybe six inches deep for the most part. Let's go ahead and push that conduit in there and get this thing covered up. This spot down here where I am, I actually dug a little bit deeper because I like to uh, sometimes pull some of this silt back after big heavy rains and so I've just uh, dug it down a bit more than the rest of it. But anyway, I'm just going to uh, cover all this back up and uh, we will move on to the next step which is going to be uh, cutting a hole in the house and getting the conduit stuck in there. I want this box to go into the house right here. And so what I need to do is uh, drill a hole in here. Now I've already measured, I want seven and a half inches over, seven and a half inches down. So right about here is where I want. I'm using a hammer drill to uh, put my hole in here. And it just needs to be big enough 
for the end of this box right here to go into the wall. All right, there we go. Well, finished getting all those conduit pieces put together. So the last thing for this video is just to get the wires pushed back into this box. And uh, you can use your imagination for what happens next, or you can stay tuned for something special here on Land to House. I am gonna be installing a, uh, a whole house system that should be quite interesting for a lot of people. So definitely make sure you are subscribed for that. Besides some caulking, that portion right there is all done. So uh, buried from this point right here and goes on up the hill to the solar panels. There is one more thing I'm gonna do up here and that's just uh, lock down that pipe that's sticking up so that it doesn't uh, blow around in the wind, but it's all finished. Thank you so much for watching this video where I install an additional three kilowatts of solar. Make sure you hit that thumbs up button and subscribe. Coming up next, I have a 15 kilowatt hour lithium iron phosphate battery paired with an eight kilowatt inverter that's gonna feed some critical loads in the house and hopefully reduce my electric bill significantly. That's kind of the purpose for adding the additional three kilowatts of solar. That way I'll have a total of six. I'm Seth with Land to House, and I will see you in the next video. Bye. Yeah, I'm not used to sitting like that, that's for sure. Oof.